back at it again baby and we have some absolutely breaking news let's dive in i think elon's doing great work here you know he's got his finger on the pulse uh, the american people are just so sick and tired of censorship they're sick of this manipulation uh, these tech companies are i'm sick of the censorship you know the, the fact that there's certain individuals who can say stuff you know and there's other individuals who can't say stuff free speech is free speech i don't think any platform should be uh, restricting free speech me personally at least I personally don't believe that and I'm obviously there's some type of uh, loophole or whatever you want to call it where you know tech companies are allowed to censor free speech but yeah I don't believe platforms should be doing that do you guys think some platforms should censor things let me know corrupt many are inefficient i think twitter especially has been horribly run uh for for decades basically right uh mm -hmm. for as long as, it, as it's been a company and elon is i think he's going to take it over that was blake masters yesterday with me he is the former coo of teal capital now running for an arizona uh, senate seat uh, the world's richest man could very well ultimately own twitter the wall street journal reporting it's possible a deal could be reached as soon as this week as Elon Musk's folks and Twitter met yesterday. Musk's initial offer of $43 billion for the social media company was first viewed as unlikely to be successful. The board, of course, uh, rebuffed him initially, but now they say they are reconsidering this deal as he shows he is going to have more funding. Uh, Angela Marbito, your thoughts here. Look, he's willing to put $15 billion of his own money on the table to make this happen. Yeah, I, I think at a certain dollar amount, they just can't deny him, right? They have to accept his offer. I don't care how much uh, the board of directors don't like him or whatever. And I've seen some things that uh, people have said in terms of uh, these billionaires shouldn't own uh, media companies. Well, I think people have forgotten that I believe it's the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos. You know, so the, 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 the hypocrisy with some things, and I could be wrong on the Washington Post but in, in who actually owns it, but I believe it's Jeff Bezos. It could be another uh, publication company, but I, I think it's the Washington Post, um, which obviously is, is, is a big uh, 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 news organization or whatever. So when you talk about things like that and then you get to Elon and just because you disagree with him, you have a totally different tone. Like, let's keep it fair across the board. And my humble opinion let's keep it fair across the board if one billionaire can own something like that then another one can just saying I, w I would like to see him do it. I think it would be very, very interesting to actually see a free speech platform be able to be used for free speech. But look, even if Elon Musk never spends a dime on Twitter, just by talking about these offers so publicly, he's actually done a, a really interesting service in that people now realize just how many folks at Twitter are scared at no longer being able to censor viewpoints they don't like. He's uh, exposed what's kind of going on in that company in terms of who really gets to speak freely and who doesn't so while i would like to see this yeah. go through i think it would be fascinating even without it elon's done something pretty cool yeah well, well look the reaction from the left and from uh twitter users has been really rich given the fact that there's been no comment about jeff bezos or warren buffett or george exactly what i just said jeff bezos <laughs> if you if you're going to criticize elon you got to criticize jeff just saying, let's let's be fair across the board. And I listen, one thing that I try to pride myself in, and I hope that you guys always hold me accountable to that. I want to say that publicly. Hold me accountable to being fair. Now, you may not agree with whatever it is that I have to say, but being fair is something that I always want to stand on. What I say against the left, I'll say against the right. If if the left is doing some BS, I'm going to call it out. If I feel like the right is doing some BS, I'm going to call it out. And I feel like that is the way it should be. Simple. Fair across the board. I have no loyalty to either side. Zero. I'll tell you that up front. My loyalty lies in facts. Whoever can make the best argument with the most facts, that's who I'm running with. I personally feel like it should always be that simple because I personally feel like when you have this loyalty to any side, 
you could be taken advantage of. But maybe I'm wrong. Y'all let me know how you feel. Soros owning so many assets, and yet when it comes to the libertarian uh, who might lean conservative, Elon Musk, Michael, well, that's a problem. Yeah, look, uh, the left and the establishment of this country has to control the narrative uh, because so much of what they say is jumping the shark on a daily basis. It, it, and a lot of the narrative that is pushed. Jumping the shark? Never heard that one before. What exactly does he mean by that? Like, dangerous? on our throats is just completely tethered from reality so um if you take that aspect out of it uh this makes good you know, this makes perfect sense from a business standpoint if, if this deal doesn't go through tesla stock is headed i'm sorry not tesla twitter stock is headed to the 30s if not the 20s um this this company has never really been monetized i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that jack dorsey started square uh a couple of years before twitter went public and that was a very successful venture from him and when you're running two companies like that the way he was kind of in their uh, their growth phases uh, it's really hard to manage two at once uh, how how Elon would do this well you know first first of all bring bring back free speech bring back a fresh set of ideas as to how to run this company I think Elon's proven that he can run several successful ventures simultaneously one of the few people in the world that could do that and then also um, look you, you know you're a board you can't accept the first offer you want to get more money I, I said last week on the show that I thought this deal would get done. I thought it would get done in the high 60s because I think Twitter wanted 75. Uh, not and Elon came. In. I don't. I don't know this gentleman that's speaking, but I, I I like how he spoke well about the board and didn't just go straight to bashing. Because I, I and I get it. I, a lot of people have just gone ahead and just bashed the board, but I feel like he was fair in his assessment of of these board of directors di di directors directors here in saying that they shouldn't have accepted the first offer. I agree with that because the knee-jerk reaction, I feel like, for a lot of folks when they uh, kind of rejected it, they, they were getting bashed at quite a bit. So I, I, I like his fairness. I like his fairness. I love it. It done in the high 60s because I think Twitter wanted 75 uh, not, and Elon came at 55. Maybe it gets done in the low 60s, but this, this is going to happen. Elon has the money. He's more liquid now than he ever has been in his entire life based on his stock sales from last year. I think he's sitting on more liquid cash than any other individual in the world. Um, and it's so it's a small margin loan, small amount of financing against uh, the operations uh, of, of Twitter. And yeah. this deal actually gets done. And to reorganize a company like this, the best way to do it is as a private company, not a public company. So from a business standpoint, this makes perfect sense. And then this is good news for free speech and the public square. And I think th these passion projects is what has yeah. made Elon rich. So PayPal uh, yeah. was to revolutionize payments. Tesla was to revolutionize electric cars. SpaceX is to revolutionize space travel. So point. now we'll revolutionize the public square. Hey, you make really great points, Michael, but real quick, is it worth Michael. $50 billion? That is a high price tag. Yeah, well, look, when you have this big of a user base, okay, you can turn these okay. social media companies into, into ATM machines. I mean, look at how much money Facebook has yeah. made over the years. Obviously, the stock's down from its highs yeah. based on the iOS uh, platform changes, That's but you can point. make a lot of money with this many users. Yeah, sure can. He absolutely can, and I, I, I wouldn't be mad at him. Uh, if he did now, as long as I'm not getting charged for being on Twitter, we're good. But I think one thing that we do have to be careful with and be fair across the board, as much as I, I personally want Elon to buy Twitter, uh, just to put that out there as much as I want him to buy Twitter. If he starts doing some BS and starts, uh, censoring anybody that disagrees with something he doesn't like, it should be called out immediately by the masses. By the masses, we, we should all be screaming at the top of our lungs if he tries to pull anything even remotely censoring. At least I would hope that everyone would would call him out on his BS. Um, I know I will personally, but do you guys think this is going to happen? Apparently, it's, it's getting closer. Uh, I've heard that it could possibly happen today. Today. It could happen. They, they, uh, it, it could happen today that they uh, accept his offer, which would be, which would be huge, huge. I guarantee you a lot of a lot of people are gonna flood to Twitter. So another question to you guys would be: Do you think that uh, Twitter will kind of get out of hand a little bit in terms of the free speech? Right. So when you talk about free free speech, obviously anybody can say anything they want to. 
and I've heard the concerns of people that are against Elon Musk purchasing Twitter, and some of it is rooted in that. I personally don't believe that it's valid, but I, I hear the argument, and me, like I said, I always try to be fair. I think it'll, I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll be a problem because I think it'll be more self policed. And what I mean by that is, for example, if there was somebody who was just going around to all black people, right? I'll just kind of throw myself into the, into the situation just so I don't put anybody else on the spot. So if there was, if there was somebody who was going around to all black people and calling them the N word with the hard R, I think there would be a mass of individuals who would come out and speak out against that person and kind of shun them from saying, you know, just, just wild, outlandish, blatantly disrespectful stuff. Now, it's one thing to say something that somebody disagrees with, but when you're just blatantly being disrespectful, I think I think that'll be more self-policed, like just the individuals, the community on Twitter, not the board, not, you know, the CEO, but just the people on Twitter will kind of... Um, stamp stuff like that out let me know in the comment section that's why i don't believe it'll become the wild wild west and just all types of crazy stuff and this and that and you know but maybe i'm wrong you guys can let me know in the comment section below are you excited about elon purchasing twitter are you not excited why or why not talk to me in the comments below like share comment and of course hit that subscribe button before you go peace and love i'm out